in learning more about the candidates for city council seats that are vacant, and of course, uh, our mayoral seat as well. All candidates were invited this evening. We are missing one, Kathleen Dodero, who had to work, um, and so I just wanted to recognize that. Uh, first off, I do want to share that the Westminster Chamber of Commerce is a separate nonprofit organization from the city of Westminster. I myself am a proud unaffiliated voter in the state of Colorado. I do not contribute to candidates, nor do I endorse candidates. The chamber does not endorse candidates, but seeks to educate the public of those who are seeking office. Our questions have been sent to us via our text line and email. Those have been given priority. If you have a question in the audience, there are question cards in the back of the room. And should we move through these questions very quickly, we'll be able to take them up. If we are not able to take up the questions that are here in the room, we'll carry those over to the virtual forum that will be this Saturday, October the 16th at 10 a.m., virtually, of course, on our Facebook and YouTube platforms. These questions are rapid fire, meaning that the candidates have 30 seconds to answer questions. They are allowed to provide an opening and a closing statement, 60 seconds each. If a candidate goes over time and continues to do so, they will be skipped. This is a timed forum and we have numerous candidates. And if you've been on the dice with me before, you do know that I do not take this lightly. Finally, I am Juliette Abdel, the Chamber President and CEO, and I will be moderating these questions. The candidates have no idea what these questions are. They're not given them in advance, nor do they have any time to study them. We also have in the front row, and I'll have Wayne raise his hand, our timekeeper, Wayne Anderson is our chamber chairman, who's holding two cards. One card is a tan looking one, which generally means you have 15 seconds left. And then another, which is a pink card, and it says stop. If you continue going, he will aggressively shake it at you until you stop. Now, thank you once again. Let's get started. We'll begin with our opening statements, and I will have Christine, if you would, unmute yourself and provide your 60-second opening statement. Hi, I'm Christine Ireland. I lived in Westminster for 35 years. I've moved here right out of college. I've raised my five children here. I run a small business. I've served on my HOA and in my church. Um, I am running because I don't like the direction our city is going. Enough is enough. Enough with city council members that don't listen to what the residents of our city want. Enough with crazy high water bills. Enough with the building of high density apartments who is, whose infrastructure is paid for on the backs of current residents. Enough with the increasing crime. Enough with the ballooning city salaries and positions. Enough with the lack of transparency of where our citizens' money is going. Enough with the brown lawns. Enough with the weeds that are causing our city to become blighted. I'm running for you because I'm not a, don't want to be a politician. I want to be a public servant. And along with most of you, I have had enough. Thank you, Christine. Please note that there are cameras on each of our individual computers. And um, in order for us to be visible, please do not try and block that with any items you may be holding. Um, OB, if you would, please provide your opening statement. Good evening, everybody. My name is Obi Azadi. I'm running for Westminster City Council because I'm transparent, accountable, and I, deli I desire to deliver hope and dignity to the residents of our city. I grew up in childhood poverty, and as a result, I bear the weight of responsibility to care for and listen to our most vulnerable. I never met my grandparents, but I was told that they lived by, by this analogy. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower itself. So I'm fighting to make sure that lower income working class families, our middle class and communities of color don't get left behind. We need a solutions oriented council focused on protecting public health, reducing property crimes and prioritizing open space and our environment. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, your opening statement. Thank you. And now comes the audience participation part. I know everyone in this room has seen at least 10 properties in the city with dying lawns or dying trees. So by a show of hands, how many of you think that those 10 residents want their property? 
I completely agree. So why is city council doing this to the people of Westminster? Thankfully, it's not too late to save Westminster. We can restore the green, tree-filled, kind, friendly place that Westminster was. And this election is a doorway to return to that beautiful city. When you elect me and those other council candidates that share my goals, the journey back will begin. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah? Hi, my name is Sarah Nirmala. I am, uh, I've worked for um, cities actually for over 20 years. I am a city planner. And what I do all day is think about community and work for people and ensuring that cities have long-term resilience and opportunity to ensure that we live in an environment where everybody has an opportunity for strong education, for housing, for a safe and healthy environment. These are all the things that I do on a daily basis. And I actually worked for Westminster for eight years and I led our long range planning, combining not only our land use, but our mobility and our infrastructure and our parks and open space into one solid plan I know how cities work, and I know that I can make strong solutions and creative solutions happen. Thank you. John? Thank you, Julia. And I, first, I want to thank you all for being here. This is what makes a great city, is this many people with this interest tonight in the, in the betterment of our city. So thank you all for being here. It's great to see so many people and friendly faces here tonight. I've had the opportunity to uh, serve in leadership positions in local government in Indiana, Northern Virginia, Chicago. And through that experience, I've seen good government in action and good government. I've seen not so good government. And one of the reasons I chose to live in Westminster is because we have good government here. We have for a long time and we do now. So I'm proud of uh, our record here. We've done a lot of good work. We've uh, added $1 million to the open space acquisition fund. And we did that in this past year. We've got a million dollars in that fund for next year as well. So open space, trails, and parks, and expanding those and enhancing those are one of my priorities. We've also added a thousand units of affordable housing. Um, and we've also, uh, we had a civics academy. I see a lot of our civics academy people are here tonight. So thanks for being here. Yep, there they are. They kind of stick together. So uh, we were able to do that. So thank you very much. And I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Dave? Thank you. My name is Dave DeMott. I'm the current mayor pro tem of the city of Westminster. I've lived here in Westminster, well, since my parents brought me home from the hospital. Um, I love our city and this community. What I'm running on is a safe, financially sound, inclusive city for all of we the people. And what does that actually mean? It means no matter if you live in countryside, if you live in Stratford Lakes, Orchard Town Center, the new downtown or historic Westminster, when you pick up the phone and call 911, please show up or fire. When you turn on your tap, you get safe clean, affordable drinking water, and that the people up here at this dais listen to you, the people. Our job is to listen to the people of the city and adhere to what you want your government to be. Um, I think over the last four years, you've seen that I've stayed true to my word. I've listened to the residents, and I look forward to serving you for another four years. Um, you can find out more about me at daviddemott.com, and my cell phone's 303-881-2728 for anybody online who wants to call after this or any time and find out about me. Thank you. Catherine? Thank you. My name is Catherine Scully, and I'm running for re-election for the City Council. Um, I came to the Council because I saw a need for um, better inclusivity, diversity, and equity within our city. In 2017, my daughter came out as a transgender woman, and I was scared because I knew that this world is not a safe place for her. But I also know that the greatest place you can make an impact is at the city level. And when I started working on the city level, I discovered that I could make change for lots of people of all different levels. And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I've done for four years. I've taken hard votes. I've worked on hard issues. I've had coffees in town halls. I've knocked on your doors every year. Um, I reach out to you. I'm there for you and I listen to you. And I work hard to make sure that this city is going in a direction that will serve all of us. Karen?
Hello. Yeah, this is Karen Calavity, and I'm calling myself a green gremlin for Westminster. And um, that's because I'm not sure that we're giving a enough credence to what nature needs in the world. Um, we, we talk a lot about what humans need, uh, but we don't talk a lot about what nature needs. And we're paying a price right now. Uh, we have wildfires right nearby. We have flooding on the shores of our country. And that's all due to um, our, our bad practices uh, with land. And I think even now we can do better here in Westminster with our, our land practices and, and having more respect for nature. And I'm the green gremlin for, for nature here in Westminster. Thank you. You've heard the opening statements of each of our candidates, and now we are moving into our rapid fire questions. Again, these are 30 second answers that you are providing. Each of you are asked the same question. So there's not one directed at anyone in specific. We are starting with Catherine answering this question. What do you think is the answer to supporting local business recovery in our community during this challenging time? a great question. We worked really hard during COVID to help our businesses and our community continue forward. Um, we had a, a grant system where small businesses could apply for grants so that they could continue to operate during COVID. We expanded their space um, so that they could operate out in the parking lot. I believe that to recover, we need to continue to work with our businesses, communicate with them, talk to them, and aid them in whatever way we can, whether through grants or um, assistance. The city is here to help everyone, including our businesses. Sarah, the same question. What do you think is the answer to supporting local business recovery in our community during this challenging time? I agree that having access to uh, financial aid in order to stay open and to find the um, support that they need to uh, to be active within the community is key uh, through grants, but also through loans. Um, we, it's very difficult for small businesses to have access to uh, finances, particularly when they're starting out. And these are things that the city can help uh, connect them to. Karen, if you would answer this question as well. Um, well, <laughs> I think that, uh, first of all, what I'd like to see in Westminster is a little bit more uh, varied and startup businesses. Uh, there seem to be big businesses that are courted and we really need more individual uh, businesses from Westminster residents. I think if we can even make deals where they get, they give the landowner or the landlord 10% of their profits versus just a strict rental agreement, that would be better. Well, I know one thing that we aren't doing right. If you find out what the rental properties cost at downtown, for a small business with 6,700 a month. Um, these buildings that we're building are not making it affordable for small business. I cannot think of a small business that can afford 6,700 a month for rent. Obi? Well, I believe that um, to really bring our businesses back from the recovery, we need to give our small businesses a seat at the table. Uh, there are lots of nuances with owning a business and, and, and as a small business owner myself, I know that um, uh, there's a lot of red tape that we can reduce from our businesses and we need to connect our families with those financial resources, um, loans and grants, um, but also make sure that our businesses have the, um, the capital that they need to start new. Dave? Thank you for the question. This is something that I think has been front of mind, obviously, for the last year. Some of the things that we've done as a council that I'm proud of are things like expanding space and listening to the businesses, because at the end of the day, the business knows what it needs to succeed. And what, how does local government play a role in protecting the business? A lot of it's getting out of their way, listening how we can support them. It's also making sure that we provide a safe environment, which is our police and our fire. And that's the role of the municipal government. So making sure that we provide those things will help business. And again, listening to them, always key to listen to them. Bruce? We have to have rules that are easy to understand. And when somebody calls City Hall, they need to get the correct answer the first time. We need to have a safe city. We also need a city 
that's easy to get around in, that's car friendly. And this has been forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great question. And as a proud and active member of the uh, Westminster Chamber, I have an opportunity to hear from businesses regularly. Uh, I believe that we do need to act as a partner with our small businesses and employers in this city. And that's, I think, what we do here in this council. One of the things we did was we, uh, well, I ensured that we were extending the um, regs to allow businesses to be outdoors through November. It was uh, due to expire at the end of September. I made sure we were able to extend that. So those are the kinds of things we hear from our businesses and on council we respond and keep our regulations low and our partnership high. Thank you. This next question will start with you, Obi. How have you worked to support the business community? I've worked to support the business community in many ways. Um, first of all, as a business owner, uh, I, I, I meet regularly with business owners um, to help them with their fiscal management. Um, financial management is key and helping them and shepherding them through the crisis that we just went through the last year. Um, I've been involved with mentorship with new owners as well and getting them on, on track and on board with business planning. Um, and I plan on helping businesses thoroughly when I'm on the console. Dave? Thank you for the question. I've uh, been proud to be a member of the Government Affair Committee for the, the Chamber for longer than I've been on this council. And again, hearing from the business community about what I can do as a council person to support small business is something that I've done throughout the pandemic and, and prior to that. And I can plan to continue to do that. Um, and again, it's, a, it's about listening to the business community in this position so that I make sure that I do my part on the council to help support our local business. Bruce? Well, I buy of the locally when I can. John? Okay, thank you. That's a great question. Um, when I'm out and about and I get a chance to attend ribbon cuttings for the Chamber of Commerce, I get to meet businesses. And just recently, I had a business that were having trouble with sign regulations. We have a new sign code here and in the city, and some businesses are finding their way through that. So I've been able to help three different businesses in that area. I think it takes listening and being out in the community and listening and hearing what businesses need. And that's, uh, I think that's our role in council. So I like to, uh, to listen and be open and accessible. Thank you. Christine? I have facilitated classes on self-reliance and budgeting and how to manage money and also on how to start a small business. Um, my husband and I have ran several small businesses. And so I think I have a lot of experience with small business and I could help others by teaching more of these classes. Thank you. Sarah? Well, as a city planner, one of the things that I focus on is ensuring that we have a strong economic uh, core and foundation to the city. Um, when I worked on building the first phase of the downtown, working with and getting small businesses into the into the downtown was actually a focus of mine. Um, we need to understand what their needs are and also connect them to the information and resources that they need. It's very difficult to navigate that within the city. So as a counselor, I would like to see us improve that. Catherine? So I've been a um, managed a business here in Westminster. So I'm very aware of some of the problems and the barriers that we have as, as business owners. I also work at Front Range Community College and I work on apprenticeships and workforce and trying to connect people to the college, to the city and to each other and help each other um, become visible and access resources. Um, connectivity and communication are really the key to helping businesses in our community. Karen? Yeah, like Bruce, I guess um, what I do is I, I buy pretty much from Westminster, but I do have a concern, especially during the pandemic, when I was forced to buy from Walmart and some of those big stores, I just resented it. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'd like to promote more locally owned businesses uh, that I can buy from in Westminster. Thank you. This next question, Karen, you are actually going to be our first to answer. There's a proposed development known as the Uplands Project that would add an additional 6,000 cars on Federal Boulevard daily and water service for 4,000 homes. If elected, would you vote for or against it? Please share why or why not. I would totally vote against it. Totally. I think that piece of land 
is a beautiful piece of land that needs to be needs to remain as open space. Um, there is no reason why development can't occur at the new downtown or the transit center where there's transportation and some available land. Um, there's no reason to be using that piece of land for development. Catherine? So, you know, we live in a great place here in Westminster. It does have beautiful vistas, beautiful parks, beautiful people, and a beautiful place to live. Part of that is because we've worked to plan it in such a smart way. Um, I like the idea of this, this Uplands development because it's going to provide housing, it's going to provide economy, it's going to provide education. It's important to our community. It's also going to provide parks. This is very important. I would be in favor of this development and have been. Bruce? Uh, as it is really presented to the city so far, from what I've seen, there is no way that I would vote for it. And then I have a larger question. If our citizens don't have enough water to water their front lawn, where do we get the water to build thousands of places? Sarah? Well, having been a uh, part of the, the city's um, planning team and understanding that we do have water for this uh, for development in Westminster, um, I would vote for it. I probably would have designed it a different way. I really enjoy and value the vistas that are on that property. And, um, you know, again, would love to see it be different, but, um, you know, it's a project that's going to bring in housing and ownership opportunities that are going to be affordable to people in the city. Dave? Um, thank you. So this is actually a difficult question because I'm a sitting member of council. And so there's a certain criteria that you have to apply to everything that comes before council in order to be non-biased. I cannot answer that question. I can tell you that the lens I applied to a building in the past is the same lens I'll apply to anything that comes before council and whether or not we have water, does it fit with other areas? There's a lot of criteria we put in, but I can't speak on a particular one that hasn't come to council. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to vote on it. John? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. And I agree with Councilor DeMott on this, or Mayor Pro Tem DeMott on this. Uh, some of the hardest and toughest work we do on council is land use. So land use and zoning and those issues come in front of council. We can't speak on that and prejudice ourselves prior to doing that in a public hearing here, but there are some criteria. We need to make sure it's consistent, consistent with the surrounding neighborhood, that it's well done, it's a smart development, it doesn't add too much to traffic and congestion. Those are all things we look at when we look at those, but I can't speak specifically to this issue because it will become in front in kind of in front of this council. Thank you. Obi. I believe that with most problems, we need to bring three things to the table: uh, residents, experts, and common sense. Um, with this project, I, I have not made up my mind yet on which way I would go with that because I think that there are multiple angles to take into account. Um, so I would refrain from making a statement on how I would vote for that. I'll have you guys take a deep breath while I recognize Councillor Seymour and Smith for being here in the audience. Thank you all. This next question I'll have Dave answer. There is a recent project that passed known as the St. Mark Project, 97th and Federal. At the time, only 10 of the 2,000 residents who commented supported this. Can you share why this may have passed? Thank you for the question. I actually voted against it, so I might not be the right person to ask. I can tell you the reason that I voted against it is I felt it was too dense for that area. There's a lot of talk about affordable housing. Affordable housing is great, but I'm not going to do a development that I wouldn't do if it wasn't affordable just because it is affordable. That didn't make much sense to me. Um, so to me, that development didn't fit. It was too dense for that area, and that is why I voted no on it. Catherine? Voted yes on it because I felt that it was right for the area. It does bring affordable housing. It moves our affordable housing across our city, which we've heard over and over from our residents that they did not want it all in one area. So we're trying to spread it out. It is on a transportation route. It's close to local um, businesses and grocery stores, and it makes sense for that area. Christine? I didn't get to answer the last question, but I would not vote for the uplands as it's now presented because I think our city has enough um, high density housing. And this project also is more high density housing. 
we're talking about affordable housing, the people in our city cannot even afford their housing with these water rates. Thank you for answering both of those questions for me, Christine. Karen, you know, I'm not really familiar with that project and I, I should be, I go along federal and I'm, so I, 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 I'm sorry, I really can't speak to that. I, I do know we need affordable housing, but I also know that in some communities, affordable housing is mixed with regular housing. So there's no stigma at all. Um, and I don't see us doing that at all in Westminster. John? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I did vote against St. Mark's Village, so I did a vote against it. Uh, and the reason I voted against it because there were 33 exceptions on that land use request. I thought that was a, a lot. I thought the parking wasn't adequate for the area. And I also thought the setbacks weren't quite right. So I voted against it. Now I will say this, I strongly support affordable housing and I support what we've done in affordable housing in this city. We've added a thousand new units. I think that's important. So um, I also support it being located throughout the city. We were hearing they didn't want it all in one spot. This was a location that wasn't. So thank you. Thanks. Bruce? Uh, well, for anyone who's driven by St. Mark's, they see cars parked all over the streets. The wishbone has a sign saying, please don't park in our parking. This was so undermatched for the requirements of this housing. And this is there forever now. This was a, a huge mistake. Sarah? Well, one, I have lived in affordable housing myself, and I value what it brings to people at certain times in their life when they don't have the financial capacity to own or rent and market rate. Um, I am a very picky planner and designer, so I really strongly believe in scale and density and that context matters. So you do need to look at how big of a project is it, what is it next to, what are the transitions? And they also believe in the <laughs> design standards and guidelines. Obi? So I'm someone who grew up uh, with housing insecurity. I've been homeless. I understand the nuances of being poor um, and of finding the really housing that's affordable, right? And I, I'm a strong proponent of housing that's affordable. And I think we need to all start lifting all boats. And I would have supported this project as, as well because it was the right project for the right area. Is there anyone that I've left off? All right. This next question, Sarah, I'll have you get us kicked off with. If elected, how will you support Historic Westminster? Please share if you've participated in any events in the past. Yes, and actually the Historic Westminster and South Westminster area was the first place that I started my career out here in Westminster. Um, so I know the area well. Um, I think the historic uh, Westminster events, um, the arts festivals I have attended. Um, and it's so important for us to be able to support these small local businesses. And I would really focus on connecting, connecting them to resources and helping them to grow as well. I think they need to be invested in. Catherine? Yes, I have visited Historic Westminster often. I sat on the Historic Board for a while, um, attended the meetings down in the um, historic area, um, talking about the great area down there. I love history. And I think that you have to remember the past in order to move forward. Um, I've been to the Bowles House. I visited the Grange. I've shopped at all the little shops. Um, and I've invited all my friends down there. We had knitting days at the coffee shop. So. Um, I love that area. I think it's a great area, and I think we need to continue to work to make it better. John? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I, I attend a lot of events there. The, just most recently, the Fall Festival, I stopped by, checked it out. It was nice. Uh, I did the tree lighting every year, uh, the Christmas tree lighting, I should say. I have a lot of friends in that area, so I'm in the area, and I think we do a good job of uh, working with uh, folks in that area to um, improve it. So, and I've would, if on council, I would like to continue doing that. Thank you. Bruce? I mean, the historic Westminster shouldn't be a really curiosity we keep on a shelf. It should be a beautiful place to live. And right now, if you've been there, the water rates are crushing too many of the residents. 
Dave? Thank you. Um, I've been doing this long enough that I've been able to attend the Orchard Festivals, the Jazz Festivals that unfortunately aren't still there. Spent a lot of time at Creative Corner, Idle Bits, the Art River Gallery, the Second Saturday Art Walk, member of the Historical Society. I love that part of town. And that's where our history is at. It's where this city started. Um, so love the area and then we'll continue to participate. I have a lot of friends from down there and I see you here tonight and thank you for being here. Obi? So during this campaign, I've spoken with um, hundreds of residents, many of them in the south of Westminster, and the people feel neglected, they, they feel silenced. So the way I would support that area of town would be to give them a seat at the table for all decision making. We, we need to make sure we, we elevate all, all, all voices and, and make sure that their voices are heard. Christine? I've spent down there, time down there and made quite a few friends down there and they do feel forgotten down there and they're, they feel like their problems are not heard. Um, and water rates are one of them. Crime is one of them. And the, the city doesn't advertise their businesses. I mean, a lot of people in our city do not even know we have a historical area of our city, and that's a problem. Karen? Yeah, I've got to admit, I, I go down there for recycling. Um, there's a big recycling area there. Um, and it is a shame to, to see how empty the place is. I, I don't know what Arvada does in their old downtown but I think we should talk to Arvada because they've got a thriving old downtown. And I think we could do some something like that in our in our part of Westminster. John, you'll answer this next question. Recently, our police chief resigned. How will you address law enforcement concerns over this with growing social issues that have raised scrutiny in this city agency? Well, thank you for the question. You know, we as council members do hear both sides of of, of that debate, um, you know, Chief Carlson just resigned. Uh, he was 35 years with our department, and I think he did a good work while he was there. I enjoyed working with him. Um, we do need to be sure that we have a police department that keeps our neighborhood safe with the very best equipment we can have and also the best training and the newest training, and we are doing that. And as a council member, I've supported that uh, throughout my time on city council, and I'm proud of my record with that. Uh, we have co-responders also showing up with our officers as well. Bruce? Uh, this will be an opportunity to see if we can change the paradigm we use for really policing. Police have to once again become good guys. And right now, police in our society are not. I remember when I was on council first in 2013, and uh, Chief Burke at the time gave us a little uh, presentation in which he, uh, the slide that he said, how do adults, how do adults view police was not good. Catherine. I think losing Chief Carlson was a big loss for this city and I, I wish him well. Um, I know he's probably looking forward to his retirement, but he's left a hole in our hearts in our city. Um, I would want to see a police board created where residents and the police can come together and talk together about how to work better in our community together. Um, I think our police have done a great job. They show up to events. Um, I see them at National Night Out. Um, we have a co-responder program. I know they're working on training. Um, I think that we are moving in a good direction, but we need a new leader and we need somebody who will take us there. Dave? First of all, thank you for the brave men and women in our law enforcement. Thank you for the officers that are here tonight. The first start is to be realistic about why Chief Carlson left. We have problems at the PD. We have morale problems. There was a reason he left. With that, I'm the only candidate up here endorsed by the FOP. I've been through our Citizen Academy three times. It's about being realistic about what our police officers need, the reasons why we have police officers leaving, and the reason that we have morale problems at the police department that I've asked about for over 14 months. It's about hiring the right next city manager. Sarah? Well, having worked for cities, I see police officers as my fellow colleagues. And I value their contribution to the community and I want to be able to equip them with what they need. And in particular, help grow their skills in um, you know, pairing them with mental health and co-responders that um, and help train them in bias and whatever they, and in communication. And 
um, help support their, their dialogue with the community and build trust. And so that's where I think we need to start. Obi? So I believe that we need more partnership, stronger partnership between the community and the police department. Um, we need more accountability and transparency. Uh, the police chief resigned. I'm still trying to figure out why or what happened, and that's not okay. I don't think it's okay that the citizens are questioning um, or are in the dark as to what happened with the, the police chief. So I would love more transparency, more accountability, and more partnership. Karen? Yeah, I, um, I know police forces all over the nation are, are experiencing this, not just Westminster. And uh, it's a shame that, I mean, there's always bad apples. There's bad apples in uh, police forces. There's bad apples in judgeships. There's bad apples. And it's important to get rid of the bad apples, but it's very important to make sure that we respect the police. And um, I just hope we can make a good transition here. Christine? I appreciate and I respect the police. I know that our city is having increased crime. I get texts almost every day for broken in cars, stolen cars. Um, so something needs to be done. We need a better city manager for sure. And the morale needs to improve. And maybe we need a few more police officers. I'm not sure, but I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Thank you. We are moving into our closing statements and we'll begin with you, Bruce, a 60 second. The people of a place run the place. And they're the people we have to rely on. I want to have affordable water because it's the homeowners who make a place beautiful. And if we enable them financially to do that, I think most of them will. City council and city government has certain specific tasks and we can't be all things to all people, and we can't fix all the wrongs there are in our society. So let's once again respect the people who live here and enable them to make this city what it should be. Thank you. Dave? First of all, thank you for the chamber for having us tonight. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, it said the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. We certainly as a nation have had our share of controversy as we have as a city, but the reality is we have challenges ahead of us. We need to hire a new city manager. That city manager is gonna hire the majority of department heads of the city. We need the right people up here who understand that this is about a safe community, affordable water, clean streets that are safe. That is what a city government does. We also like our parks and open space here in the city. So reelecting me, I understand the job and I am a person of my word. I believe I've done a good job for the last four years and I hope to get your vote in November. Again, daviddemott.com and I look forward to, to your vote. Obi? Thank you for having me tonight. Um, the reason why I'm running for city council is similar to most of the people on this stage, but I believe that we need to eliminate partisan politics um, as you've seen and heard over the many years, uh, one of the key priorities needs to be making sure that we get back to listening to the people, to speaking with people, speaking with residents, meeting them where they are. Um, and, and that's why I'm running. I'm running because it shouldn't matter what you look like, where you live, how much money you make, um, or who you love, right? It needs to be, we need to make sure we bring equity, dignity, and opportunity to everyone. And it, it starts now and it starts on November 2nd. Thank you. Christine? I've been to city council meetings. Um, in 2018, I went to a city council meeting. I spoke about what the water rates were going to do to us. I was told they were only going to be 10% higher, but that is not true. Mine have gone up 70%, and that doesn't include the sewer rates. I am here because I want to serve you. I want to get to the bottom of all this lack of transparency in our city. And I want to return a voice for you. I was taught when I was a child, a penny saved is a penny earned. 
The money you give to us for the water, for sales tax, whatever, is your money. It should be treated that way, and it will be if you elect me. Thank you. Karen? Yeah, again, um, I'm Karen Calavity. I, I, um, I've lived in Westminster 11 years. I lived in Denver previously. I uh, experienced the recession, and I, I'm here in Westminster because I lost my home in Denver. I, um, I know some of the problems, and I think through good land use and planning, we can, we can do better here in Westminster, and I, I think I'm a good candidate to help make that happen. Sarah? What I can bring to Westminster is not only vision, but compassion, as well as accountability and solutions. I have spent the past 10 years working for Westminster, not just as a staff member, but living here, growing my family here, um, investing in the city. And um, you know, now I'm on the environmental advisory board. I still contribute and I want to ensure that we have a community that we all love 20 years from now. That is as beautiful as it is today. It's a place we all and our kids can stay and enjoy. And I understand Westminster. I know practically every foot of it. And um, you know, I understand how the city works too. I know what tools we have. I know what solutions we can bring to the table. And I know what gaps and improvements we need to bring. And I wanna make sure that I'm, we have that on council and around me too. Catherine? been my greatest privilege to serve this community in the capacity of the city councilor. And um, I want to continue that work. I want to um, make sure that we are including all the voices that we're thinking strategically. We're ensuring a safe and welcoming and inclusive city. I've taken hard issues. I've taken hard votes. Um, I've brought jobs and businesses and housing and more parks and open space to our community but there's a lot of work left to do, and I want to be that person that gets to move it forward. Um, we must continue to work together because we're a community and we live with each other. And I want to be that person that connects you and helps you move forward and, and explains things. Um, I invite you to join me for coffees and town halls, and I'll see you at the doors. <laughs> Thank you. John? Thank you, and I, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, this has been a good a good forum, um, and thank you for your interest in, in showing up tonight. Uh, I'm proud of our record on City Council. We've made a lot of tough decisions, and we've made a lot of progress. We have, uh, like I said, $1.2 million more in acquisition for open space parks and trails in the city. In this last year, we have another million coming for next year. Uh, we have worked with our police department, fire department, paramedics that have safe neighborhoods. We've invested in the best equipment we can and the best training we can, so I'm proud of that record as well. Uh, we've added a thousand units of affordable housing throughout our city and that's helped a lot of people and i'm proud of that uh, we offered a civics academy this year for the first time our first annual civics academy and it was a way for us as a city to expand out and have outreach to our citizens so they can learn more about our city so i'm proud of that uh, we also need to invest in our infrastructure responsible investment in our aging infrastructure is a must we need to continue that work as well so i and then finally, I'll say we need to keep this as a welcoming, inclusive city and uh, check out voteforvoles.com for more information. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of our candidates. Let's please give them a round of applause. We will be taking a quick four minute break to transition into our mayoral forum. You're welcome to stay in the room or go use the restroom. Thank you once again to everyone that was up here.
We are going to go ahead and resume our forums. If you hear my voice, that means yours should be quieting down and you should be finding your seat. We are moving into our mayoral candidates and we have two candidates that are up here. Um, our current incumbent, uh, Mayor Anita Seitz and our former mayor for the city of Westminster, Mayor, uh, mayor uh, former Mayor Nancy McNally. Um, they will also be following a very similar structure as our previous candidates with an introductory statement that they have of 60 seconds, a closing statement of 60 seconds and rapid fire questions of 30 seconds. Some of the questions are going to be duplicative because when they were submitted, they were also to be asked of mayoral candidates. Some are picked up just this evening, of course, and then a few different ones that are peppered through. So we will get started and I will have Nancy, if you would share a quick introduction, 60 seconds or less. I'm Nancy McNally, and I just have to reiterate what council is really responsible for. It's four things, your water and sewer, and I believe it does need to be affordable for everyone. Public safety, our fire and police must have whatever they need, streets and maintenance. I do have 20 years of experience in leadership development. I have run three CEO searches, which seems a little bit more important today. And um, I just believe and with all my heart, because when I was here before, your voice was very prominent and it does need to return to City Hall. Hello, my name is Anita Seitz and I'm the mayor of Westminster. Um, I have three beautiful children that I am raising in Westminster. I have an undergraduate degree um, in earth sciences from UNC and a master's in business from Regis. I have had the pleasure and privilege of serving on the Westminster City Council for the last eight years. And I'm so proud of what we've accomplished over that time. We took a dead mall that had been purchased and demolished by a previous council and was just a bunch of dirt and seen $450 million of private investment go out um, with housing ranging from affordable um, to market rate, great restaurants, businesses um, come in. So that's been wonderful. We made our second largest purchase of open space in the city's history. We increased our police staffing by 45 um, individuals and we have our first ever sustainability plan. I really focus on sustainability because I want to make sure everything we do as a city promotes the long-term fiscal, environmental, and social health of our community. Thank you. Anita, you will be answering this question first. What's more important for our city right now, building new homes and commercial space or rehabbing, expanding, or better utilizing existing homes and storefronts? Um, there, that's a false question. Uh, question. Those two things don't have to be in competition. Um, when you have a thriving uh, local government that has good planning and is focusing on our economic um, resilience and vitality, you can do both at the same time. And so it's really having a comprehensive plan that understands what Westminster needs to serve the city well today and tomorrow, what mix of uses, what attracts employers, what helps residents have access to a high quality of life. Nancy, if you would please answer that question. A good comprehensive land use plan would have all of those pieces in it, but more importantly, it will be linked with water. We have heard it we're 2000 acre feet short. And then in another meeting, you'll hear, well, when a counselor poses all of that over and over, well, you know, we're really, we're not. So what is the answer? I think the very first thing the new council needs to figure out is with utilities and with this city, how much water do we have? Because you deserve to be taken care of. You are the residents of Westminster that have invested. Nancy, I'll answer this question first. How do you feel about transportation options currently available in our city? Do we have enough options? If not, what will you do to increase those? I just got off of the CAC, uh, the Citizens Advisory Committee with RTD, and I'm sad to say we won't see our Northwest Rail go on to Longmont. So that is being killed. But that said, we at least have one stop. We have to keep working at, we have a great bus system. We have 500 buses that come just down here to where the, um, the downtown is being built. That has been a big force so people can get around and we just need to continue that. Thanks. 
Nita, do you want to answer? That's a big question for 30 seconds, but I'll begin to address it. I serve on the Denver Regional Council of Government, the North Area Transportation Alliance, and the U.S. Northwest um, Mayors and Commissioners Group, working on transportation for this region. Um, COVID changed transit dramatically. We saw ridership drop, and we've never seen a restoration of all of our services. So yes, we need to have more transportation options in, city, in our city. Additionally, our roads are in our declining their, their condition. And so we need to invest in our infrastructure. We need to make sure that as we invest, we're making the most of every public dollar focusing on multi-mobility. Anita, I'll have you answer this question first. There was a recent project that passed known as the St. Mark's Project on 97th and Federal. At the time, only 10 of the 2,000 residents who commented supported this. Can you share why this may have passed? Yes, I can share with you why I voted in support of it. Um, this was a very important project um, for the city of Westminster and something I'm really proud of. Um, we really lack access to affordable housing up north. Um, we had a high concentration of it in the southern portion of our city. Um, and this allowed us to have an site that had a lot of constraints. Um, there are power lines, there is a water tank, um, and it's situated behind a, a restaurant um, to have a high and best use of this site. And now there are families that live there, little kids. When I drive by, um, it makes me very happy to see the little kids' bikes and slides um, on their porches. Nancy, if you would please answer this question. I wasn't involved in that piece, but in listening, I do know there's parts of our city that are tired of having affordable housing put in their backyard. And so with St. Mark's, it made some sense. I, I maybe would have asked for some other different pieces and parts there, but I think it is in a good place and I hope it works out. Thank you. This next question I'll have you, Nancy, answer for us. This is a proposed development known as the Uplands Project that would add about 6,000 cars on Federal Boulevard daily and water service for 4,000 homes. If elected, would you vote for or against? Please share why or why not. Sure. And for some of the same reasons other counselors um, talked about, I hate putting out there what I would vote because I don't know all of the pieces and parts. What I do know is we have to be absolutely sure we have the water for that big of a development. That is my first criteria. Anita? Yes. Um, as a sitting member of city council who may have that come before me in a quasi-judicial, I cannot bias myself by answering that question. Um, but I can let you know that the area between 84th and 88th um, and between Federal and Lowell was designated TMUND in the 2013 Comprehensive Plan that was voted on prior to me being on council. Um, so it already has been part of the water plan that analyzed um, what, what um, it would take to provide water to that unit. Thank you. This next question, Anita, I'll have you answer first. The city manager recently resigned. How do you feel this will impact the city and business? So, one of the things we really benefit from in Westminster is a strong workforce with very talented and dedicated individuals. Um, we have a deep bench. And so I know through this difficult time of transition, they're going to make sure that they're still providing excellence in city services to our residents. Um, I know they're committed to bringing public value to everyone. Um, and as we search for a city manager, we're gonna wanna have participation from the community from the workforce and we'll wanna make sure we, we cast a wide net because ultimately that's an important role. Nancy? City manager is the one of three decisions that a city council makes because they only have three uh, employees. And this will be huge to make sure that the right person is picked. I think that um, Jody Andrews, that is the interim right now, he has, I, I know he has the, the ability to carry our council until there is a city manager. As I'm checking into this night stuff, just take a small break. Mike's working. Is this mic working? Try, try it again. Nancy, will you try yours? Hello. 
I think Nancy's is not working. Let's pause. That's important. <laughs> Which is great for you because now you have a, a chance to have some break. <laughs> This is really rapid fire. We go through these very quickly. So I appreciate you all um, being great under pressure. Maybe you need a joke or two. So while we're figuring out the tech issues, I'll be sharing with you a few things related to our advocacy or public policy type programs. On Monday, we did host our Jefferson County and Adams uh, County or Adams 12 school district forums. So if you are uh, interested in learning more about those candidates seeking school district office positions, you can find that forum available on our Facebook page for replay, learn more about them and be more informed as your ballots have already been mailed on Monday. Most of you should have those in your mailbox as of yesterday, if not today. If you do not have your ballot, please um, contact the city hall so that way they can um, help you locate that or at least have access to one. In addition to the forum that we held on Monday, on Tuesday, we had a ballot overview. There are a number of questions that are listed on the ballot for you this year for our city. And um, it might be helpful for you to get an idea on what the impact of those questions are, what they actually mean. Sometimes I read a question like, did they even think about this in layman's terms? So that's what we did. We dissected that down with our general counsel for you on Tuesday. You can find that replay, of course, on our Facebook page uh, for review. This forum, in addition to the one on Saturday, is your opportunity for those city council candidates and our mayoral candidates as well. Brian, are we good to go? Hello? Hello? All right, Nancy, will you answer the question? Uh, repeat, answer that question for us. I, I can't think of which question it was. <laughs> City manager. I know. A <laughs> City manager recently resigned. Um, how do you feel about this from a, from a community or business lens? Well, it's always a, a new time to look for new leadership. That will be the council's um, role. That, that is one of their three employees. So it, it's a critical issue. And I have been through three of those searches, so I know how critical it is. So, uh, But I do know we have good um, bench for uh, Jody Andrews. I saw some some positive changes already that he did Monday night to acknowledge the citizens that were here. Thank you. And Nancy, you'll answer this question first. Um, how will you work to support the historic Westminster area and how have you participated in the past? Most recently, I was in the parade on Saturday with the Westminster High School. It is so much fun. And so many people down there, citizens of all ages, people sitting in the windows. It was great. I sit on the historical society board. Um, Linda Grable's here and she will bring anybody dead alive and tell you all about them. But all of the, the, um, the what, uh, stores that are down there and everything, when you come in there, it says historic art district and we need to bring that. Thank you, Anita. Hi, thank you for the question. Um, historic Westminster is where it all started. And so it's an important part of our city um, one of the things that I've helped promote was the Harris Park plan. So making sure we had community um, outreach to understand how we want um, that community to grow um, and how we want it to be visioned. Um, I was very concerned because we really want to see a vibrant arts district on 73rd and a lovely business, but not an arts business, moved in right next door to the art gallery. Um, which was disappointing and made me realize we needed zoning that'll, that helps facilitate our dreams. Anita, we'll have you answer this question first. How do you define success in our downtown? Mm -hmm. um, I define success when we have the actualized vision that our community shared with us. Having a true green build, multimodal, multi-use center that has affordable housing all the way through a luxury housing great restaurants, shops, places for the community to gather, and it's self-sustaining. Um, we are seeing that already happen um, with groups like the Tattered Cover, um, Mark Shaker's Westminster Alley Food Hall, the Burger and Tap coming there. Thank you. Nancy? 
First of all, when I left council in 2013, we were sustainable as a city if nothing happened to that land for the foreseeable future because of the way um, it was for building at that time. We just couldn't find somebody to take it over. So I remember so distinctly how people saw that. We need, we need all pieces and parts there and it's too much in 15 seconds to say, but it, 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 we need a good flowing piece down there and we need to make sure there's enough water. Nancy, we'll start with you on this question. How have you worked to support the business community? Oh, at, during COVID, I have been everywhere and I have heard lots of things from, they didn't hear from the city. They don't know as different changes came with masks because we're in two counties, what they were supposed to do, not do. So I have mostly listened and supported. At, in, I'm a small business person. So I know if I don't have residents coming to me, I don't succeed and they don't either. So I just try to be the network piece when they ask questions, plug them in with the right person. I don't have to be in the middle. Anita? This is a great question. Um, I am the child of business owners. I owned my own business and now my husband owns his business, his small business. Um, so I care fundamentally about how we help support this. Um, one of the first things I did was go from just a strictly recruitment and retention economic development strategy to building economic resilience through supporting local businesses, small businesses, and also entrepreneurship. Um, additionally, during COVID, we made sure that even before the federal government, we offered grants and reached out to local businesses, making over 2,000 calls to let them know what the new regulations were since there was some confusion. We're going to move into closing statements now. I know we've kept you over a little bit on time. This is a minute each. Um, Anita, we'll start with you. And I feel like Wayne's arm is falling off. <laughs> so sorry, Wayne, I, have, I don't have peripheral view over here. <laughs> Anita, if you would. My name's Anita Seitz, and I want to continue to serve as the mayor of Westminster. This is a beautiful community, and when my husband and I chose to live here, it was because of the access to a high quality of life that we found. I want to make sure when my children are grown, they still have access to that quality of life. That's why I focus on sustainability, making sure we're good fiscal, environmental, and social stewards of the public dollar. Um, I want to continue to work with you, for you, and for all of Westminster. We've heard a lot tonight about water and land use planning, and that's an area I'm actually well versed on and asked to speak at national conferences on. In 2013, when the former city council approved the comprehensive plan, it created a 2000 acre foot gap. That's something that we've known. Um, but what we need to do is figure out how do we shrink that gap through conservation? How do we make sure that we're using the highest and best use of every single parcel whether that's for open space, whether that's for business or residential, because our community's future depends on that. Thank you. Nancy. At the top of the organizational chart is you, the citizens. Next, you pick your council. So and that's what you're being asked to do by November 2nd. In 2013, yes, a comprehensive land use plan was um, passed. And a comprehensive land use plan is a living document. As I've said, in some meetings, it's been asked, is there 2,000 acre feet shortage? It has been answered by one of the utilities people, no. So what's the truth? I don't know. I haven't been sitting in executive sessions or, or planning sessions, so I don't know. But we need to know before we keep moving forward. I had a developer in my home and his first question to me was, why are you not taking care of the citizens that have invested in this city? And why are your water rates what they are? Good points. I have experience. I we're over our minute. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I can um, see his arm waving. I know. He's getting tired. <laughs> I mean, sorry. this is what happens when I have volunteers. <laughs> They're unpaid team members. <laughs> Um, I do want to thank everyone that is here with us this evening and thank both of our candidates that are up here on the dais. It's not easy for anyone to decide to run for office, for them to not only put themselves personally 
um, and their families into it, but also for them to spend the time and the energy to go out to each and every one of you. So I do want to thank all of our candidates that are up here, those that have participated in our previous um, portion of this event, and for each of you for being informed. Please let others in your network know that this is up and live on our City of Westminster YouTube page, that they can replay it and rewind to their heart's content. Of course, pause at certain places and take notes. And I will see you all hopefully virtually on Saturday. Saturday at 10 a.m. Thank you.